using the Global Innovation Index framework, we are able to collect data and metrics to assess the results of innovation in different economies. This year, we collected data on 81 different variables, and we use these different data sources to assess innovation trends in 143 economies of the world. So at a very simplistic level, if you think about which economies are doing the best, you see a lot of familiar countries out there. Of course, you have a mix of both European and American economies. But what is also interesting is you see some Asian economies. So Switzerland is ranked number one. You have US in rank number six. Singapore in rank number seven. And you see that in the top 10, innovation really has become a global game. So they are hot spots or bright spots of innovation across the globe. It's not just localized in any one part of the world. At the same time, if you look at a little broader range of countries, you see that in the top 25, things haven't really changed. And this basically shows how an innovation divide exists in the world and actually persists over time. And if you have the benefit of looking at trends over time, this raises a very important question for policymakers in different economies about how to overcome and how to cross this innovation divide across economies. Now, if you look at these economies that are performing well, you notice that one thing in common across them is they all perform uniformly highly across all the different dimensions. If you take a slightly different analysis of the data, you can compare economies and look at the performance compared to other peers. Peers as probably defined by income levels or GDP levels. Now, if you look at these peer comparisons, you start seeing some interesting trends. You see, of course, some of the leaders performing much at a higher level of innovation output as compared to some of their peers. Switzerland, US certainly outrank their peers for similar GDP or wealth levels. Now, if you look at some other countries, you see some interesting trends. If you look at, for example, the middle to high income economies, you see some countries like Moldova, like Mongolia, like Vietnam, Jordan, Senegal, who are outperforming. You see, for example, China, that is today ranked at position number 29. And this is a phenomenal ranking. In fact, a very dramatic progress over time over the last few years. And I would not be surprised if China keeps up its rate of progress if it soon hits in the top 25 and is really counted amongst the most innovative countries in the world. If you look at lower income economies, you also have interesting names and interesting results out there. You see economies like Kenya, Uganda, Mozambique, Moldova, and Gambia. These countries are also coming up and they are in fact performing better than their peers in many respects. So once again, you have an element of comparison which gives us some hope that some economies are in fact moving forward at a faster pace and learning at a faster pace. In fact, we term these economies that are outperforming their peers to be innovation learners. Now, there's another interesting metric that we can, in fact, include and measure inside this analysis, which is looking at what is the efficiency of innovation, comparing and dividing the output by the input indicators. So at different levels of performance, how efficiently does a certain economy transform its input parameters and input conditions into actual output results? And what we find is, once again, some interesting new names come up as some of the leading countries in this sector. Gambia, Senegal, Kenya. These are names that are ranking very high on the innovation efficiency metric. And to us, they indicate important trends for the future because they show which economies are learning faster and where probably a lot of the future growth in the economy and other interesting new innovative ideas will emerge in the future. And this is an important lesson 
for business leaders who want to choose where to invest the R&D resources or set up manufacturing plants is an important element of indicators for government leaders who are looking for best practice examples. Not every country can become a Silicon Valley. What is there in the US is very unique. What is there in Finland is very unique. Not every country can become another Finland or another Switzerland. But every country can learn from others. So what these other examples give us really are inspirational stories, are examples that we can learn from and hopefully leverage these better practices and integrate them in our economies to become more competitive ourselves in the global economy.